Hello booktube, my name is Elizabeth and I read bouquets and books and this is a chit chat video where I will talk about the books that I've read recently. Surprise surprise, they're all related to Jane Austen because we are in the middle of Jane Austen July. So if you don't want to hear about Jane Austen, thank you for stopping by, I will see you in the next video. For the others, here's what I've read so far this Jane Austen July. I've read Sense and Sensibility, which is the last of the main novels of Jane Austen that I hadn't read yet. And then I went for the smaller things. I went for Lady Susan that I had never read either and Sanditon and the Watsons. So I read the entire book here. And I also read in parallel What Matters in Jane Austen, 20 Crucial Puzzles Solved by John Mullen. Um, I will start with this one. So this is nonfiction and it assumes that you have read all of Jane Austen novels. So I think it's the first thing you should know if you have not read Jane Austen and want to, if you don't want spoilers, wait before you read this. So this is full of spoilers. And John Mullen talks about the Jane Austen novels, but not novel by novel. It's not, it's not a literary analysis. He talks about the details in Jane Austen novels. For example, he talks about money. How much money is enough money? How much money is a lot of money? He talks about uh, the card games the characters are playing, the dances the characters are dancing, the books the characters are reading. Um, he talks about why the seaside is dangerous in Jane Austen and various topics like that. Um, so these are things that either would have been obvious to contemporary Jane Austen readers or things that were not necessarily obvious for them, but are not obvious for us either. So little things that deserve to be brought to light and that make reading Jane Austen more interesting. For me, the main side effect of this book was that it made me want to reread all of Jane Austen. It made me want to reread Emma and to reread Mansfield Park, even though a couple of weeks ago I would have thought, meh, I don't really want to reread these books, they're not my favorite. But after reading this, I want to reread them. It's really a good book if you like Jane Austen, it will make you like her even more. So absolutely, completely, total fun. I also read Scent and Sensibility. That is in fact the first thing that I read this July. Well, I'm lying when I say July, I started in June. So for me, it's June Austen and Jane Austen July, both. <laughs> so I was not expecting much from Scent and Sensibility. Um, the reason being that I had seen the movie by uh, Ang Lee, uh, written by Emma Thompson. The scenario was by Emma Thompson and she was starring in the movie too. And I was assuming that it was faithful to the book and that I wouldn't learn much about it. I would just learn some details. Uh, indeed, the movie is quite faithful to the book, but there is one major change. So, spoiler alert now, if you don't want to hear about the movie or about the book, you may want to skip ahead until you don't see this book hovering near my face anymore. So the big surprise, the big change for me was Willoughby. In the movie, I had the impression that Willoughby was in fact not necessarily a good guy because we know what he did to Colonel Brendan's friend, Eliza. But I assumed that he was honest with Marianne from the start, that he was in love with Marianne from the start. In this book, there's an added scene that is not in the movie, that is at Cleveland, where Marianne is sick. Um, Eleanor is waiting for Colonel Brandon to arrive with her mother, and instead of having their mother arrive, it's Willoughby who arrives, and he wants to have an explanation with Eleanor. He wants to explain himself and to hope to redeem himself in some sort of way. And for me, this conversation only proves that Willoughby is as bad as he, he is, he says that at first he was just toying with Marianne, that he was not honest from the beginning. Um, I, I sort of left this scene with the impression that if he could have slept with Marianne without asking her to marry him, he would have done that. And what disappointed me a little bit is that Eleanor somewhat fell for it that Eleanor believed Willoughby and that this interview with him somehow redeemed him a bit, that she had sympathy for him afterwards. I don't see how learning that Willoughby was not honest from the start redeems him. So that, that was a bit strange. So in that sense, I think the movie is better than the book. 
So I, I'm going to take the controversial position that the movie is better than the book. I think it was a wise choice to cut that scene. After Sense and Sensibility, I read Lady Susan. Um, so th this book says send it in and other stories. So the other stories in this book are Lady Susan and the Watsons. Uh, Lady Susan, I did not expect much because it's a... Uh, it, I think the first work Jane Austen wrote and it's an epistolary novel and I don't really expect much from it but it was really good it was very funny I think it's funnier than anything else Jane Austen wrote well that I read and the main difference is that Lady Susan is a bit of a villain she's not the naive she's not the innocent heroine that we have in all other Jane Austen novels she is a widow she has a grown-up daughter and she wants to have a bit of fun in life. So she's not a slave to conventions. She's not a slave to appearances. That, that makes it very interesting. So I really like Lady Susan and I think it's one of, I think I will reread it quite soon. It was really a lot of fun. Uh, the other fragments in this book are Sanditon and the Watsons. Uh, Sanditon, I found it a bit disappointing. I know it's just a beginning. It's just, um, how many chapters? I think there are a dozen chapters, about 12 chapters, but nothing go well, not nothing, but not much goes on in the first 12 chapters. It's really just a setting of a setting of the setting. And mainly the heroine is not clearly defined. She has absolutely no personality in this. She's the young lady, well brought up, who has a lot of common sense. And there isn't much else, so I'll, that was a bit disappointing, send it in, but then again, what can you expect from a first draft of a beginning of a novel? Um, the Watsons I found more interesting, it's more fun. The characters are better defined and the situation is better defined and we know who is attracted to whom and we know much more about the plot from the Watsons. And it's about the same length as Sanditon, but I think it gives a better idea of the characters. So I preferred the Watsons to Sanditon. So, so that's another thing that I read. I've talked about all that I've read and what I am reading right now. What I am reading is... Okay. Madame de Stal, Delphine. The reason why I'm being careful to present it like this is because this is the way I bought it. I bought it online, seeing just the cover. Now, when you look at it sideways, haha, <laughs> it's 1,000 pages. So... Um, I, I don't think I will finish it before the end of June because, uh, uh, the end of July, I'm sorry, because it's all like this. It's really just a block of blocks of text. It's a thousand pages like that of just text, text, text. So it's going to be a bit long. So it's three times the length of a Jane Austen novel and I will be lucky if I get half the plot. <laughs> that being said, there is something very curious, something very peculiar, there's a big coincidence. In Lady Susan, the last name of Lady Susan is Vernon. Her husband is a Mr. Vernon and her brother-in-law is a Mr. Vernon, spelled V-E-R-N-O-N. -E In this book, there's a woman who is a widow, who has a daughter who's about to be married and whose name is de Vernon. V-E-R-N-O-N. -E so the, it's the same name. It is an epistolary novel too. So letter five, letter six. And this Madame de Vernon, this Lady Vernon, is not very nice. She's very selfish. She doesn't really like her daughter. There are definite parallels to Lady Susan. So I am wondering, did Jane Austen read the English version of this? I tried to find if this was translated in English at the time of Jane Austen. It was published in 1802. Uh, when I did my uh, Pile of Possibilities video, I said it was published in 1795, but it was published in 1802. And the, the action is set in the 1790s, so from 1790 to 1792. The coincidences are such that I'm wondering if Jane Austen perhaps either read the book or maybe more probably read a review of the book or heard some comments about the book and decided to make a spoof of it and that this spoof became Lady Susan. Like, the coincidences are there. So I will keep reading. So far I am about, I'm at page 176 out of about 1,984 in fact. So um, I still have a lot to read 
And this is a drama. This is clearly not a comedy. I know it will end, well, not necessarily in a bloodbath, but I think a lot of people will die. A lot of people will be miserable. And yeah, it, it's a drama. Uh, but I, I keep looking out for these little parallels between Jane Austen and between uh, Lady Susan, more specifically, and uh, Delphine and this book. So um, Delphine is not Mrs. Vernon. She's not. Uh, she, she's the nice person. So, so this is uh, one of my big projects for Jane Austen July. Another book that I'm currently reading is Bo Brummel by Ian Kelly. This is a biography. I am very surprised at how much I'm enjoying this book. Um, I thought I would enjoy it on some sort of intellectual level that I would learn about the Regency, uh, about the time period, but I'm having fun reading this. I'm taking my time, I Google everything, and it, it's bringing me joy. I don't know why, <laughs> because nonfiction brings me some sort of intellectual satisfaction generally, but this one really brings me joy. I don't know why, but I'm savoring it. So this is super interesting. This is, I would say, the masculine side of the time of Jane Austen. We don't really see the masculine side in Jane Austen. We're always with women. There are very, very few scenes where there are only men. In this book, it's quite the opposite. There's always at least one man present, which is Beau Brummel, but very often it's men in the context of other men. So when first Beau Brummel goes at Eton, I think that's how it's pronounced, E-T-O-N, the, the fancy pants school at Windsor. So when they talk about that school, it is instructive and it's instructive of how little instruction you could get out of a fancy school. <laughs> so that is interesting. And then after school, he joined the army. So that's again, another very masculine side. And then he leaves the army and then it becomes truly the life of a dandy where he is preoccupied only with his clothes and how he looks and what people think about it, about him and his place in society. And uh, it's, uh, he belongs to clubs. So we follow him at the clubs. We follow him at the theater. It's really the dark side of Regency, of upper society, I should say. So I am about halfway through the book. So Brummel at, at that moment is a bit at the height of his celebrity. Um, so Brummel became famous for dressing nicely. It's really odd. I think he's the first Kardashian, <laughs> famous for being famous. He didn't really do anything. He's not a writer. He's not a poet. He's not uh, a war hero. He's not a member of the nobility. He, he really just is famous for being famous. I think it's one of the first of his kind. And it's super interesting. So I'm really having a lot of fun reading this. And um, yes, I'll, I'll keep you posted. And I think I will make a full review of this book. Uh, it's really worth it. I really, really like it. So if you come across Bo Brummel, Ian Kelly, it's really interesting. So that is what I have read and what I'm reading and a bit what I will read for Jane Austen July. Uh, so far, it's going so well. I'm having so much fun. I hope your Jane Austen July is going as well. Let me know in the comments what it is you're reading for Jane Austen. And uh, I hope that you're having as much fun as I am because this is really fun. <laughs> so thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video. À la prochaine!